Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're traveling back to a Coney Bell tiny house village to meet one couple who decided to downsize because they couldn't seem to find happiness in their big home. They're gonna take us on a tour of their beautiful tiny home, which they share with their St. Bernard, and tell us why they found a new sense of freedom by living in a smaller home. Our expenses have come down significantly to the point where I don't have to work as much and I have all this extra time that I've never had. As time goes by and we get rid of more and more things, it's freedom. And if you're curious about this tiny house community or any other tiny house community, we have a playlist linked in the description that will give you tours of tiny house villages across the country with plenty of information about where you can park a tiny home. But right now, let's jump right in and take a tour. I'm Kate and I'm Brian. We live together with our St. Bernard Jack and we're excited to show you our tiny house that we've named Faith. I grew up very, very poor and so I kind of grew up with that belief that if you have more then you will be happy. My writing career took off and my books took off and so we thought that that meant that we needed these big things and we needed this big house in this exclusive neighborhood and... And we bought it. And we did. And I had never been more stressed out and I'd never had to work harder and I'd never felt more inauthentic. I would say it was kind of maddening because we had just bought this big house. We've got this beautiful neighborhood. Check. Right. We got all this furniture. Check. And we kept waiting to be happy. When are we going to be happy? Right. And in reality, we became more and more stressed. As time goes by and we get rid of more and more things, it's freedom. We were living in New Hampshire and our builder was in California. Contracted cost was $84,000. We've spent well over a hundred now, partly because we had to move it across the country and that cost us 9,000 to mm -hmm. move it across. We've been here for just That's about fun four months. We are very much tiny newbies and we've had the great opportunity, you know, at a Coney Bell where we're surrounded by people with so much more knowledge than us and they are so kind to share that with us. Moving yeah. into this community and the welcomingness yes. of this community has been a blessing mm -hmm. for sure. Welcome to our tiny house, Faith. We elected to go with a 32 foot long, 10 foot wide home with a two foot bump out over the front of the house. So our total length therefore is 34 feet. We went with the maximum height that would be road legal is 13 and a half feet. So that's where we're standing at. We did go with a triple axle trailer that has an 18,000 pound capacity to handle all the weight of our home. Our home has 13 total windows, including the door. We have the majority on this side, which is the part that sees the most sun of the day. So we have great sunlight throughout the day and great natural lighting inside the house. On the other side of the house, we have some larger windows that give us some nice view of the mountains and the Oconee Bell community. The whole square footage with the tiny house thing, it's very confusing to me because technically we're 32 by 10, so I would think 320. But that, so that's like downstairs to me because then you have the 10 by 10 upstairs, so that's 100. And then we have eight by 10 up there, so that's 80. So do we have 500 or do we have 320? I don't know. <laughs> Basically for our entire house, the most important thing was function. And so for the couch and stuff like that, the cushions lift up and so there's some functionality, but I also wanted cozy. So we've got lots of blankets and we've got our candles everywhere. And so this is kind of just like the space where we mostly hang out. So this is Jack the St. Bernard, and he just turned nine on November 1st. And so we've had him since he was about this big. 
He literally had fit in our hands, which is hard to believe. So Jack is a hairy dude. I'm sure you, you can see that. And so for him, particularly, he has these special cooling beds. He sleeps all day. <laughs> That loft area belongs to our boys when they come home. We have grown up boys, so they're both in the military, so they're not home very often, but that is kind of their space when they are home. And then also I use that for an office. When Brian is at work, I work downstairs because Jack, he gets a little lonely. On the days when Brian is at home, I definitely go and work up there. There's a very mild pitch. You don't want snow sitting up on top of a roof and you also want your water to be able to drain. We ended up going with eight inch mattresses so that we can maximize being able to sit up here and be cozy and still have plenty of headroom. So this is a full mattress. One thing that we had learned before we went tiny is we didn't understand that mattresses have to have like a little, a little bit of a breathing space underneath them. So each of the mattresses that we have, we have like this tiny little thing and you put it under the mattresses and it makes it so that the mattresses can breathe so that they don't get moldy. The getting down is a little uh, less graceful. <laughs> Welcome to our kitchen space. We are kind of in the center of our house and in my mind, the kitchen is the kind of the heart of your home. Functionality was key and then a little bit of coziness with just a couple of decorations, but we are big into, you know, cooking for ourselves. And so some of the absolute necessities that we had to have in this house were a normal kitchen sink and a normal stove with an oven. At one point, once upon a time, we'd had a 3,000 square foot house and our kitchen was enormous. By golly, we actually didn't need almost all of those things. <laughs> so the pantry was the hottest of messes. So I ended up ordering in a bunch of like these, these type of, I don't remember what, I think they're Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid and got these cute little labels for them and just kind of started designating spaces for all of these things. And I will say that my baking drawer is my absolute favorite. So, <laughs> just because it looks, I don't know, it just looks so neat and so fun and I just wanna bake things. Going to an apartment sized fridge actually hasn't been a big deal at all. It's worked out totally fine. So this is just basically, we've got a big old massive closet here that pretty much fits everything that doesn't fit somewhere else. <laughs> I guess maybe you could look around and you see all of this white and white kind of is sterile, but I like to let the accents kind of do the talking in our home. So I also am obsessed with flowers. So we literally have flowers on the table every single week. To me, sitting down to a meal with family and friends is vital. So this was very important. I don't wanna sit on the couch and eat our dinner. My mood is very affected by if I'm in yoga pants or jeans, or if I'm sitting on the couch or sitting at the table, like if I'm paying bills or sometimes doing certain work, it's serious and it's, it's like time to sit at the table. So. <laughs> so that's kind of what I think of when I think of this space, but mostly it's a place to gather and enjoy food together. We had to have it. We wanted a, a normal size sink and we've got the, the double action here so it can keep dirty on one side and clean on the other. In our last space that we were in, we didn't have a garbage disposal. That was an absolute must in my mind. When you're going tiny, you don't always know where you're gonna end up, finding your parking spot. So we just really wanted to be in charge of our water. So we've got a really cool filtration system that gives us really tasty water and I like knowing that it's ultra filtered. This is one of my prides and joys in the house. I absolutely was thrilled that we were going to be able to have propane again because we had been in electric. I didn't want our, our bumper, the wheels, impeding in our living space. And so what we ended up doing is, you can see it here on the stove, 
the they had to bump our counter space out about it about that much to make up for the wheel well space so with that bump out i think we got about mm, maybe three or four in inches of extra space and so that sounds wonderful and it's wonderful to be able to put our olive oil and salt and pepper back there but one thing that we didn't realize is that when we get into the cupboard to be able to reach things we kind of end up on our tippy toes so having that top shelf isn't necessarily functional in this space unless we're going to be on a step stool so, so that was that was unexpected and unintended but Welcome to our bathroom. I actually love this space. You know, when I was thinking of tiny house bathroom, I was very concerned with how small it was going to be, but this is actually a very functional space. We were able to go with a quartz countertop, which we love. And I always wanted to do one of these cool little sinks here. So kind of has a farmhouse vibe. There are people that are braver than I am that, you know, they do the, the compost thing. I think that's a wonderful thing, but I am a toilet flushing kind of gal. So, <laughs> so we went with just kind of the traditional and we are so blessed to be at a Coney Bell where, you know, you can have normal plumbing. I just wanted normal. I just wanted as normal as we could have. And so that's what we got. And so this is our fabulous little shower here. I wanted a bathtub. Although it is shorter, it's a little bit squishier it's also very tall so there's still plenty of room to get in here and just sink in and just really enjoy a nice bath i don't know about you guys but i think of sunday as self-care sunday and that means a bath so <laughs> so when brian and i first moved in together eons ago we did not have a washer and dryer and that was the only place that we ever didn't have a washer and dryer so like if we couldn't have a washer and dryer I wasn't going tiny <laughs> so we ended up getting this is an apartment size model and we absolutely love it and it's actually it, it's really big like I feel like the dryer does the same size load that maybe a typical dryer would do obviously maybe not one of those big kahunas but yeah it we love it These are our stairs and we love them. These stairs actually are a happy accident. Our original builder had run out of time to finish our build. And so they had kind of had a, a skeleton of stairs. At Oconee Bell, we are so blessed to have all kinds of fantastically skilled carpenters in the neighborhood. So our friend Mike, he was so kind to build these steps for us and they do all kinds of magical things. So like this step, um, opens for us and I keep some puzzles in there <laughs> um, so that's not a huge space but it's big enough for a thousand piece puzzle and then they just all lift up and so we're able to kind of keep extra kitchen storage in them and then the the bottom two are the super coolest because not only does this one lift up but you can also pull it out and then this one it doesn't lift up but it just pulls out a super long way and this is where we have ended up putting some of our extra shoe storage so from here we will head on up to the master loft this is a hundred square feet so it's a, a 10 by 10 loft we ended up going with a queen size mattress and again it's the one of those eight inch mattresses I wanted us to have room around each side to be able to crawl <laughs> because we do crawl up here. <laughs> um, but we you know just have enough space to kind of maneuver and get around and not be all squished the one thing that I do not love about tiny living it's making the bed so a lot of crawling and I wanted to be able to, to get at the bed from all of the sides. I love to journal in the evenings. And so it was super important to have a space to put a cup of tea and light a candle. I could not find side tables. So we ended up going with one single cube. You know, we were kind of concerned about the privacy aspect. Not only do we have pretty little banisters, but then also 
We ended up going with like an eight cube system from Ikea over here and kind of decorated those up. The boys have a four cube system on their side. And so there's primacy. If you just open up these windows, you have this gorgeous breeze that blows by. And not only does it make your bedroom comfortable, but it also just kind of pulls through the whole house, especially if you have lofts on the other side and you open the windows on in the other loft too. It just pulls this fantastic breeze through the entire space. So we do that often. <laughs> So one of the considerations that go into the home is, you know, what are you going to put on the siding? And we knew that our preference was not to have a metal or an artificial looking siding. We wanted it to look very much like a house. So we elected just to go with wood. Uh, we put a nice high quality paint on it to protect it from the weather, but we elected to just to go with wood. One of the requirements for living in a Coney Bell is that we cover up the bottom of the house. We have a temporary skirting on for now. So our long-term plan here is to actually enclose all of our underside, insulate it, and waterproof it. When the temperature drops, we can feel it in our feet. All right, so our external storage uh, was in our design from the beginning. Our storage actually arrived unfinished, and it turned out to be a good thing because when they installed our hot water heater, there was a mix, mix up, and they actually installed an external water heater inside of our storage, uh, which is a complete and total fire hazard. So we had to rip all of this off. We now have a three sectioned storage. This first section just contains our hot water heater. You're not gonna be able to see too well into it because we had to put a metal blanket on the inside of the wood because we still have that external uh, hot water heater and it has a pretty decent exhaust. So we wanted to protect and thermal protect uh, the inside of the wood. We did go with propane for our hot water heater and for our oven. All of our lines we insulated and we heat wrapped. So we do have a plug in here that has a thermostat in it that will kick on when the temperatures drop here in North Carolina to keep all of our exposed water lines uh, heated and from freezing. So in addition to the hot water heater, we also have actual storage here between these two uh, compartments. We bought all the same size bin so that they're easily stacked. And we kind of designed this storage container to have this bin in it. And you can see we have pretty decent amount of storage. We do have access to our electrical panel back here. We elected to go with 50 amps. This neighborhood, uh, Coney Bell, is fantastic because they do give you the option of hardwiring it at 100. So here's another area that we should have done a little bit more research into. We did the research into which mini split that we wanted to have and where we wanted the placement in the home. Because we have double lofts, we were concerned that one loft would be super cold or super hot during that particular season and the other side of the house would you know, not be feeling any of that. So we, we definitely wanted to have a middle mounted HVAC unit. What we didn't know and didn't anticipate is that when the fan kicks on, we get a really low tone rumble inside the house. You can't hear it out here. It's not like our machine is loud. It's just because it's on our wall down the road or if we had to install it again, we definitely would not have mounted it on the side of the house. We would have mounted it down on the ground and just run longer tubing up to it. Our home came with scissor jacks installed uh, at six different points throughout the house, but the majority of the weight was sitting on the wheels. And so um, we found very early on that after the home was leveled, that we had sway up in the lofts whenever people were walking down below. So we very quickly uh, changed course and we are now sitting on concrete blocks, at six different points, and our sway is completely gone. You know, sometimes I feel fraudulent saying that we live in a tiny house because it doesn't feel tiny. I just want to keep, you know, being more and more simple and it's very relaxing and, and soothing and I just, I love it. Our expenses have come down significantly to the point where I don't have to work as much and I have all this extra time that I've never had. And that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty cool thing. 
Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to check out a tour of a Coney Bell tiny house community by clicking on the link in the description. And I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.